Oh my God. Well, yeah, listen, I wish we were talking in a week as well, but. Oh, what, what a... the heck? I mean, like that. Yeah. <laughs> so close. One week away, one day away, man. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't want to keep it together. Uh, but alas, you know, you get jumpy, you get ants in the pants. Uh, so you're out a week early. Well, I guess I want to ask along the lines of, you know, what you were thinking, specifically when it comes to your final moments. Kelly vocalized, oh, he looks pissed. And that whole tribal council was you really being forthcoming of, if I make it through this vote, I see a path for the end. Again, you were someone that was very open in general and at tribal council as well. But was Kelly's assessment accurate? What was your move after that blindside? It's tough because I I listen to these exit interviews. And I I think that people have maybe have, have a tend to like you know correct you know like oh this is how it was like the 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 woulda shoulda coulda has become like the was, uh, so I really have tried to avoid that. Um, so for the first part of this, I'll say definitively no, I wasn't mad. I was humiliated. I was so mortified because I knew all day I had been so confident at camp, and then during tribal council I had been listening to the answers. You know. And I started to realize something's not right. Like, these are not the answers that people are giving if it, you know, if Julia was going home. And so I started to sweat and sweat and sweat. Uh, and so by the time I left, I was just, you know, inside thinking like, ah, oh, they're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to Roger Sexton me from the Amazon, you know, which, which, <laughs> which I don't know, could have happened. But, but yeah, no, I wasn't mad. I, I was uh, mortified. Yeah, so if you felt the heat coming on to you, you know, you did float this idea out of, if I'm in trouble, Julie's probably throwing a vote on me. Maybe I ask Austin to play the amulet on me. Was that really a possibility? How much were you pressing him to do that if you felt like you were in danger? So it's tough because the thing about advantages is that to ask for one is a huge commitment. Um, and if you're wrong, it really jeopardizes your relationship. Um, and so I... I I didn't, I, that's tough. I didn't want to be like a burden, you know, if it was unnecessary, like I didn't want to freak out and be paranoid and be like, give me the thing when he had to play. And then the other component um, is that like, if they're coming after me, gee, it would, and, and, you know, you know, my ally has an idol who could play it on me. It would make a lot of sense to split the votes on Austin and I, right. Mm. So that's an aspect too, that you got to consider. Am I really okay with that for, for what could essentially be like a, you know, you know, 11th hour jitters, right. I'm at tribal council and I'm getting nervous. I didn't feel that way all day. Like, okay. <laughs> stick to stick to the facts uh, but no in fact it was necessary uh and obviously i wish i had i pulled like a malcolm like bro uh but at the same time malcolm was wrong so you gotta be careful so we need to talk about these last couple of votes because such a such a shift i think from Total obviously shift. that that reba strong mentality i mean let's start with the julie of it all because you sit there on the beach and you say great Reba for officially majority. I don't know how this happened, but here we yeah. are. You decide in that moment, okay, here's the time when we start to look at Julie. What made you think this particular moment was the time to strike? So we we already had an agreement as a four to turn on each other at six. There was no mm. illusion we were going to go to the end. And um, I think we all loved the game and we were a little nervous about like the interest of the, the season if we all went together at the end. And so this was actually a point of decision making. So we had decided we were going to turn on each other at six. I jumped the gun a little bit because Bruce went home at eight. We were expecting him to go home at seven. And so then six would be the, you know, let's get things going. Um, but I went after Julie and I was, I was surprised to see the way it was portrayed. Um, and so that really, you know, maybe this isn't true. Um, but from my perspective, I went after Julie because Julie was playing the game like harder than anybody else. Like Julie had so many like final threes made with people that I was starting to hear about them. Uh, like it was a point of discussion. So I figured if anyone was going to like branch off from the group and go their own way, it would be Julie since she's been laying the groundwork so assiduously. Um, now, it, everyone seemed to have a sense that I was, in fact, looking to do that. So, you know, who who really knows? But that was 100 percent the rationale for my targeting with Julie, because she's got great social relationships with the jury. She's making independent strategic moves of the four. Um, and she's trying to consciously trying to build other avenues to the end. And like Julie and I had a final three and we hadn't talked about it in a number of days. And so I was like, hmm, you know, what, what's going on? What's going on there? But, so but who knows? When you come back to same beach spot and she does sort of like tackle you out of what the hell guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now that you know, quote unquote, perfect information as to D being the one to tip her off about playing the yeah. idol. You said that this was an island full of bad actors, but how much were you truly believing D in that moment? 
Okay, so that's the reason why I, one of the reasons I said it was an island of bad actors is because we thought, or I thought at least, that D had leaked the vote to Julie, but I thought it had happened during that conversation with Austin because I wasn't there, right? I was off doing a confessional, the other things, you know, obviously we, we want to give those two their, their moments. Um, but it was a long conversation. Apparently it was a pretty emotional conversation. And I heard that Julie stumbled into it, like in the middle or towards the end, in that emotion and basically got like, oh, you know, nothing's going on. So my impression um, was that maybe the, 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 the emotion and length and the conspicuousness of that conversation had tipped off um, Julie. And so when I said they were bad actors, I was referring to like not even keeping it together for like for the, the conversation on the beach for. Um, so obviously, D intentionally told Julie, I didn't know that. But the assumption was that that maybe maybe D had, had leaked it somehow. So, again, at Tribal Council, it seemed like you really were forecasting yourself as one of those final three seats. I mean, you talk about having a bunch of these deals. What was your ideal? Final three. Let's say your wish comes true. Julie does end up going here. Her second life is extinguished. I know you had mentioned down on the beach, like D and Austin, a final three, but what was your true plan to win a million dollars? I would have been comfortable going to final three with anybody. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. that was total delusion uh, watching it back uh, just based on, you know, what we've been presented. But I did think that I, I, the jury just based on its composition and, and the boots and whatever, they might give me um, an over, oversharing of the strategic credit. The Reba 4 made most of its strategic moves together. Um, but I certainly, you know, had, had been a component just by the way I talk. And then also, Mike, I'm a great talker. Like I, I, I can sell, sell, sell. So I thought that those attributes would set me up pretty well in any final three combinations. I was set to go with Dean Austin. Um, but yeah. I mean, obviously, at at, at final tri at tribal, it's a little unusual for somebody to be like, "Oh, you know, if I get through this vote, I'm going to the end." From my perspective, as I've told you, you know, I started to get a little nervous at tribal uh, and changed the way I was approaching. So that for, like that for me was more of like a show of strength, you know. Like if you think you're going to the end with me, like like let's let's do it. Like I'm I'm in. I'm confident. You know, don't 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 get rid of me. I'm not I'm not gonna not gonna betray. But alas. Well, what I find so interesting is that when we talked, you know, right before the season started, you were very open about being open. You said, I know I can be perceived as cerebral, as strategic, as a good talker. Yes, I'm not going to hide that. And I think you just showed sort of the dichotomy in that, right? Is that on the one hand, you could be perceived as if you made it to the end, oh, he was the one that was making a lot of the decisions because he vocalizes yeah. them so well. On the other hand, you hear Jake say, Drew is the best speaker I've ever seen in my life. You have D in a secret scene talk about like... Uh, Drew is just an incredible strategist and such a speaker. So oh, in terms of that perception it. cutting both ways, I mean, do you feel like it worked out better or worse for you being so upfront about, to, for lack of a better term, how smart you are? Um, on the island, I think it worked out for the better um, because it was how I accrued a lot of my, you know, presence on the beach and for the jury. Uh, definitely since airing, it's, it's gone for the worse because uh, the fans freaking hate it and they're really coming for me and that sucks. Um, but I don't know, you know, I'll give the example of Katura and, and there was a conversation at this tribal council, which, you know, we didn't see where, where Jeff was like, Katura, like you're making moves, you know, you think you're making moves. Do you need to like present those moves a little more? Do you need to take a little more credit? Cause she was so under the radar. She was so, and so I think that that would be a great example of the economy. On one side, you have me and Emily who are very upfront. Um, and then you have people who are like really keeping the moves close to the chest, um, and so we'll have to see on this season on, you know, the next season and previous ones, um, which strategy is as the right one. Yeah. I want to talk about again, that openness, because there's also a difference between like being so open about your own sense of strategy and your openness when it came to several types of conversations you had when Brando approaches you of like nerd yeah. alliance, right. And you're like, nope. And then a uh, culminating, I think, uh, most visually in the fight with Jake, the infamous <laughs> mobster versus goon oh squad God. stuff. I mean, talk to me about that, because I could also imagine part of that is just sort of like you you can't help but wear your emotions, especially when you're getting in a bit of that that tip with Jake. But talk to me about that strategy to just be so forthcoming in a game that can be so much about deception. Uh, it's Mike, like, uh, I can't swear, but I didn't really like a lot of this stuff. I didn't really give up, you know, like in my opinion, Survivor is a game. It's like an 80 20, you know, 80 percent of your interactions are meaningless. It's 20 percent that really count for something. So with Brando, I'll go, I'll go point by point. Brando, we had made like some, some final, you know, alliance with Austin and me like earlier. And then we hadn't spoken. And now there was a new one. 
you know and so my my thought process was like okay dude like like come on oh we're just you're just trying to like trip me up over myself and then go to emily and like he's not working with you you know or or, or, just, or austin i don't know so i was just kind of sick of it you know i was like okay obviously here are the battlegrounds because we've never had any talk about our alliance other than making alliances different alliances um and then with the jake thing i was just frustrated you know because i felt like i had i had gone to bat for jake uh especially with the kelly vote um it had rained that day and we'd been sitting in the shelter and we this is one of my most you know clear memories all the girls had been sitting together talking about like their astrology and their zodiac and jake and i had been talking about about video games basically about fire emblem and pokemon and i was i was listening to the guy and i was thinking this dude like really cares this is a great guy it would, it would really be a shame, like, if he went home at this point, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I, I love Jake. Uh, and so then when he's, like, tossing my name out, I was like, dude, come on, you know? Like, like out of personal affinity, like, I really stuck my neck out for you. But in hindsight, of course, like, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was not as much gameplay as the intrusion of personal emotions, which I think is more interesting as a viewer and as a player. Yeah. But, you know. Well, listen, I want to talk about, about that in a bit, but... I'd be remiss to ask, you're the first Reba 4 member that I'm speaking to, and this is something from a while back, but I'm so curious. Why did you think Sifu had an idol? You all Yo. looked for the idol at camp. You knew it was an Mike, awesome come possession. Mike, for me, dude. I wanted somebody to ask this question. Okay, at, first of all, we had just seen 44, where there were six idols by episode four, right? Mm-hmm. So six idols was kind of the benchmark. We were like, okay, there could be this many, right? And then on our sign, there were two rows of code right so we found that we found that thing that unscrambled one of the rows but then we're like what's the second row uh-huh. and the solution from my, you know my perspective was obviously that like it's another idol it's another advantage that we just didn't find the clue for and that sifu probably found the clue for so that's why we were so convinced that sifu had something because there was that second line of code which was never resolved interesting what yeah. was what was the mood like from a scene that we didn't see where you know once julie's relatively safe at least before that final seven vote i imagine austin approached her in some regard and said hey can i have that idol back and it seems like she in so many words said no what was that interaction like (laughs) um well you know it's we never really like the next day i can remember walking with julie we're at the water well and i was like i called it austin's idol and she corrected me like my idol like the next day and we were kind of just like okay you know because that's a situation where you know, if she's correcting you, she's obviously not going to give it back. Um, and the other thing is, especially um, at the point when she first got it, she would talk a lot of times about like a big move she can make with it to, to like set herself apart. Mm. So we kind of just got the sense that like, okay, she's laying claim. You know, it is what it is. Let's uh, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater and like overreact to this. But it, it, that was really the moment when Julie started to, for me anyways, kind of step out as as a target as someone you know who would not not be making moves that were necessarily uh commensurate to my best interest interesting well the last thing i want to ask is again you talk about sort of like those emotions you can't help but have them boil to the forefront yeah. i'm not sure if you saw this morning but there was a secret scene uh that was all about sort of jake and julie speaking about your mood around camp perhaps recently. I know that you were not happy about uh, not going on rewards. Uh, You know, you were unhappy about the babysitting stuff. It was clear that they sometimes said that like you could be a little bit of a, of a pessimist. It's not like you weren't enjoying your time, but there's even a montage of you like letting out a bunch of exasperated noises in confessional. I mean, talk to me a bit about that. Not to say that like you were a, a negative Nancy the entire time, but again, I think a lot of us would assume one of the biggest strategists of the season would not exactly have those emotions so much at the forefront. So t- talk to me a bit about that. It was a lot of it. I mean, yeah, emotionally I was pretty down uh, by the end of the game and it was a lot of it was lack of food, but then it was also, I was really nervous about maybe my position because on paper I looked really good. Um, but you know, Ryan Ulrich is a guy I really like, and I thought mm-hmm. I played a very similar game to, and who I said I wanted to play a game to because I think he's very well adapted for the current meta. And he got to the end with no votes. And I, the whole time I was like, God, I can't get to the end. Or he got a vote, but he lost. And I, I can't, I can't do that. You know, I can't repeat that. And I was worried, worried. And the jury obviously hated the, hated the, my guts. Um, uh, so I, I, yeah. I, and Austin also, who had been such a reliable number one, like suddenly there's this thing with D and like, what can you do? It's day 20. All your plans have been made. You know, and so I, I was, I was feeling a little left out and I was feeling that, that, things outside my control had changed 
um, that, that were affecting me for the worst. And it really shifted my mentality. Yeah. So when not to speak too much about like, obviously behind the scenes of Ponderosa, but when you get there and you have that chance to sort of decompress, I mean, you talk about the humiliation you felt from your blind side. Totally, dude. What, once, once you get some food in you, like how were you able to compartmentalize all of that knowing, okay, I still have a job to do in a few days time. Uh, <laughs> irresponsibly, I was pretty done, dude. Like I mm-hmm. wanted to, in my mind, I wanted to sit by the pool, drink pina coladas, like just chill, you know, but like the wheels are still turning when you get to Ponderosa, right. For everybody. Um, and, and not, not for me, man, I was out. Um, so I, I probably didn't think about survivor, um, from my vote off for, for like until July. And then like the floodgates open and I, I processed, you know, the hell out of everything. Um, but, but no, yeah, I, I think that I was kind of at a, like the ed, end of my fuse a little bit in the game. Certainly you're going to see it in that secret scene. It sounds like, um, and, but when I arrived at Ponderosa, like I was ready to just chill out. 